Hey guys, how you going? I have a special guest today. It's Jules, aka Julia Braga from Finland, and she's a brand strategist and designer. She's just smashing on Instagram and she's providing so much value. And today we're going to be talking about brand strategy and how you can up your design game so you can provide more value to your clients. So why don't you say hello, Julia? What's happening? Where are you from? Hi, thank you. Um, I am a Brazilian living in Finland. <laughs> It's quite a change, <laughs> to say the least. Awesome, Julia. I just want to say thanks for coming on. Really appreciate your time. And yeah, let's get stuck into it. So how did you get started in design? Like what inspired you to you know, go for that career? Hold on to your horses because that's a long story. <laughs> uh, so when I was, I was maybe like 11. Well, there was this one photo of me when I was seven sitting on a computer where I was playing games. So I think like I had this, um, magnet towards technology in general and then I think I found out about and everybody now is gonna roll on their chairs about paint and I started <laughs> playing around but come on I was like nine ten I don't know gotta love paint <laughs> you know got a lot like you start from somewhere yeah that's right <laughs> you know <laughs> and and I started playing around, like I was always very interested in painting and drawing because mm. my grandmother was a master of painting, like she gave cool. lessons and my mom opened her shop by painting on That's awesome. ceramics and I lost you. Oh, now you're back. <laughs> it's all right, just keep going. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> and uh, And so... I had access to computer in school and I started finding places mm. where I'm not sure how, did, did like you what I was searching and what I was trying to find. But then I found mm. things about Photoshop. Mm -mm. And by the time I was 13, I was teaching myself how to code and I made my mom buy a computer <laughs> so I could awesome. use Photoshop. Cool. And it was like this period, right? It, it took like 10 minutes to open a program. I don't even know if I was using Photoshop or some free other did, program. Like I don't remember. Did you used to have dial up as well? Because I remember when I had my first computer, my dad like had a thing because he was an he's an IT guy. But we had dial up. The internet was horrible, and then I was just like, man, I can't do dial this. Dial up. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> dial up. <laughs> Everybody would scream at me because they needed to use the phone, and I was on the freaking internet. <laughs> but <laughs> in any case, um, I. I was really interested in like music at the same time. Mm. And I've always had this thing with Finland since I was mm. maybe around that age, actually around eight, nine, like I discovered Finland. Yeah. Awesome. Again, because of music, uh, my grandmother was also an opera singer and she would listen to oh. this guy called Sibelius. Cool. So it's classical music. And he, she was like, oh yeah, Finland and this. And then some like friends of my uh, um uncle also mentioned a few mm. bands from Finland and I was like oh that's really cool sound mm. I'd like to know more and then I yeah. got involved with like forums and mm. fan clubs and I was doing websites for them mm. and uh, what happened I went away <laughs> it um no it was the stupid apple pencil battery low so oh, okay. now it's charging and <laughs> then technology and then <laughs> Um, I was doing those websites for the fan clubs and mm, like for free or was real, it paid work? No, it, they weren't. They weren't official fan clubs back then. Uh, they yeah. were pretty big. They are pretty big brands, especially mm -hmm. nowadays. And we are still involved with the bands, but I'm not involved with the fan clubs directly anymore. Like just a Brazilian for one. Mm. It's just a, a fun thing because I'm in Finland, you know, and people want the connection. Definitely, but. Wow. The interest for graphic design started with web. Mm. And at the same time, we had this like voluntary work at school. And I was like, they were, I think they wanted some kind of mark for the whole thing because mm -mm. they wanted to collect donations, like food donations for people who were in need. And um, it was kind of like a group decision. But I remember the first logo I designed was like, <laughs> Bad or good? <laughs> they still use it, which I think it's a oh, good okay. thing. Oh, awesome. 
And like it wasn't bad. It was just an interesting way. Like we took a huge piece of paper to one of these um, mm. daycares we used to work at, and the kids they put their hands on the mm. like we painted their hands, and then they, you know, it was kind of like the, yeah, a yeah. playful thing with them. Mm-mm. And then I took the best ones, put it on Photoshop, wrote the name in the middle. I yeah. did not use Comic Sans, thankfully. I had more <laughs> sense. And uh, Helvetica, Helvetica. I think they just, I think they just improved on it from then. Cool. And, uh, it's awesome. It's still there. And then I sort of went away from graphic design to photography, but not mm. completely, completely away because yeah, yeah. I was using Photoshop to edit and stuff. Yeah. So I worked as a photographer when I was around 15 I like worked you know I was yeah, yeah, yeah. taking photos of horses and selling to the owners basically oh, like I would print out and reach and like because mm. I was spending my days with like horses and yeah why not I like at, horses. at the barn at the barn and I had this interest in photography and then my mom bought me a camera and then I paid it back oh, well. to her by selling those photos and i i feel like back then i already realized that my creativity like could become something yeah yeah wow and yeah i kind of had the example of my mom who opened her shops by doing something similar you know like painting on ceramics and soaps and she opened a freaking shop out of it so so you i can see you like you had creative roots in your family with your grandma and your mom and that, that obviously really inspired you. And I think that's awesome. Like even for me, my mom as well, she was into like music and dancing and producing and like all that stuff. So that's why I sort of got um, into music and, um, and then obviously into design. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's awesome. So l- like, let's fast forward. So, so that was your teen years you're working. And then yeah, when did you like eventually start like running your design business? Was it like around 20 years old or like what happened? How did you shift to like doing your own design um, business stuff? So I always wanted, I, it, at some point it became clear that I would work with graphic design. I didn't know in which area. So I yeah. went to university in Brazil because my mom wanted me to go to university in Brazil. I wanted to come to Finland, uh, Finland. obviously, but she was like, no, 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 no. You were staying right here. I was like, okay. <laughs> she didn't want to let you go. Let's see about that. <laughs> <laughs> I always get what I want in the end. Yeah. But, so like at the same time that, you know, I knew I wanted to come here. I went to university in Brazil and I realized that, oh, well, now it's going to be like this controversial talk because everybody's like, oh, you should go to university. Oh, it's fine not to mm-hmm. go to university. And I was like, well, I've, I've been in two and both of them sort of like didn't give me what I needed. And it may, maybe it's because, you know, my pa- both my parents have their own businesses and I've seen them mm-hmm. working with yeah. business like, acumen if you would yeah yeah. right word yeah if you if you would even think about that like and i wanted i wanted to know more Mm. how that that would apply to like a creative business and i didn't get that and by the time like i was two years in in the university i was like maybe 18 i was like okay i'm paying way too much money for this (laughs) it's not worth it i could be using i like it was maybe like 900 euros a month a month for wow yeah yeah. And I was like, I could be living in Finland with that money because I had done all my research and the yeah, university yeah. here was free. Wow, so I could so just, good. you know, like I could use that money to live in Finland instead of doing, mm. being there and doing what I love at the same time. Yeah, hundred percent. So I went stealth mode and dropped everything, worked <laughs> at Outback Steakhouse to- <coughs> Oh, we have that, we to, have that here as well. I love this. To, <laughs> to, it's actually dropped quality quite a bit in Brazil, but that's another. Okay, another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's another whole story. But um, <laughs> so I was working there, saving money, and yeah. uh, my mom was like, What are you doing? You were in this great university, and now you were mm. working as a waitress. I'm like, mm, Wait for me. <laughs> I, I know. Hold I know on, hold on. I'm planning. I'm coming just, up. Just watch. <laughs> she would like literally come to Outback and stare at me like this in the middle of the restaurant. What? Really? Like she would go to uh, eat there and then she would stop and do like, what are you uh, doing? <laughs> but then like she got sick and she found out she had breast cancer and I was mm. like, okay, 
they sort of stops all my plans and I have mm-hmm. to drop everything. So then I sit down with her, sat down with her and like broke down. And <clears throat> yeah, we both broke down. And I told her, look, this is all that I'm planning. And she was really taken aback because she had no idea I would go that far. Mm-mm-mm. As of like planning and talking to people it was like the poor guy who, who took in the admi- admissions in the university had yeah. enough of me, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And the other side of the world and I was like yeah well they they would accept like if I wouldn't even to do need to do uh, an English test to come because I had like mm-hmm. all of those degrees and yeah yeah in English and they were accepting me and she was kind of like okay well what now mm. so she put me as a um, partner in the business businesses and um, like her, I had to her say own that. businesses like her own businesses or? yeah okay okay yeah cool so so we have like a re- both a retail one is a jewelry shop and one is an arts and decoration shop so we sell mm-hmm. like cool uh, f- from anything that you would need to decorate a house and to like Mm-mm. put it in a house and uh, i didn't know what i was doing right right up on christmas sales i was going crazy i, I was feeling <laughs> like this is terrible our house is under renovation we are living in this shitty ass apartment because it was the only thing that was near us yeah yeah wow. my mom is sick i have no idea what's gonna happen with her and now mm. i have i am in the middle of this business that i don't know how to run but somehow i have to yeah i want to learn <laughs> design and i want to work with design and i want to move to Finland and i want to experience this but i mm. can't and it was like this really weird time mm. that it, it feels like a numb like, it doesn't feel like it happened to me, but I know it did because I was there, obviously. Yeah. But, like, she she recovered to a point where I was like, okay. Mm. Because, let's say, there was seven to eight months to when yeah. I would have to come here and do the entrance exam. Yep. So, when I managed, you know, when she was feeling, she was heading towards the end of the... Mm-hmm. Of the chemotherapy and the yeah. therapy and uh, and uh, she was like well i think you should go but you are not going to be able to spend like the three months that you planned in and you have to choose just one degree because i had applied for many universities yeah yeah and i was like okay well it seems fair enough you know at least i i try and yeah. like I'll, I'll be able to be here because the businesses they run themselves mm. without us there yeah. but at the same time like if something happens i'm you know, on the yep. other side of the world. Yeah. So there was just like this hard. tension all the yeah. time. So I came here, I spent a couple of, I don't even think I actually spent two weeks. I think I spent like five days. Yeah. I did entrance exams and went back and then it was just waiting for mm. the, for the time to go and study, which was like August. Yeah. 22nd, I arrived in Finland and um, got into university started learning like the first year and i think was it a design course what, yeah graphic awesome. design like but what bothered me actually was that for the first year it had nothing to do with graphic design and it, i do appreciate it in it's a way his- because you know mm. they teach about the history right no it was like wood workshop metal workshop what? and what like it was interesting really? because i like these things yeah, you yeah. know but they were not Whoa. what I wanted and I wasn't able to opt out at okay. all I was like can I that do sucks. like some business courses or like management courses instead yeah like, mm. can I switch it up they were like oh that's annoying <laughs> oh man you had to and get so through it <laughs> I had to go through the first year but it was fine it was interesting you know like okay. at that's the same enough. time they taught me 3d which is a big thing for mm. me nowadays um do, do you when you say 3d like what do you mean because in high school, I used 3D Max, um, and now obviously I I just use Adobe Dimension. But like, what do you what do you use for like 3D stuff? Uh, they taught us parametric design for well, we had two different lessons. The first one was just introduction to Rhinoceros and V-Ray. Yeah. yeah. Nobody uses Rhino, but like mm. apparently they thought it was a good idea. Yeah. And then we had some parametric design courses. But the thing is that like the university, they decided they were going to close the English the, yeah. uh, graphic design. And yeah. it was frustrating because we would go to lessons and teachers would take 40 minutes to come and they would huh. come and then say, oh, 
you know, you guys do this. And then the teacher would go have a coffee and I'll come back. <laughs> so that, that's, when, that's when I like took it in my hands to sort of learn what I want. And I was like, okay, this is enough. This is ridiculous. Yeah. And then I got, I think we talked about it, maybe Sean, Sean West. Yeah, yeah. We mentioned that we, so, we started following him and stuff. Yeah, um, he's, um, he had at the time a lettering course. Yeah. And the teacher, I had a British teacher and she showed us his courses. Like, if you want to learn, she was the only one that had some sense in yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, degree, yeah. in my opinion. Like creative she was like, and stuff. This is, this is just an introduction to branding. You're going to have to like expand your, yeah. your skills. And here is a great course on Skillshare. I think he, he had initially it on Skillshare. And uh, like really when he started, like mm. 2014 or something like that. Yeah. Wow. Cool. And uh, I started following him and then he switched to the community. I yeah. joined the community and then I learned a lot. Like oh, awesome. that, that's when my, when the knowledge that I wanted actually. Ready business inspiration You know, started. came in and then I read books by Gary Vee, Tony Robbins and yeah, like yeah, everyone, yeah. everyone that had nothing to do with creative <laughs> businesses you know yeah but I think it's important like for me same I, I started following Gary Vee um you know Dan Locke um Robert Kawasaki like all those you know the entrepreneurs yeah Robin but there's there's heaps of them I but... think I think that's the greatest mistake that designers or creatives in general make is that they only want to read this stuff written by designers and yeah, they leave so much big like, mistake <laughs> that generally it pisses me off <laughs> I, like look, generally I, i'm like stop like i i understand that you want to read design and i think you should deepen mm. your your skills and like your hard skills but there are skills that you're gonna need 100 percent. like you're gonna under you gotta understand how to negotiate mm. You got to understand how to sell. You got to mm. understand like the value of money and the mindset that you got to have to actually make money. You know, otherwise. 100%. Where are you going? Like nowhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, and I think like a lot of yeah, young designers, they just focus on the technical and like what tools you're using and all that stuff. But the, the thing is you got to expand your mindset. And like, even for me, like I'm interested in like in tech, in gaming, in, in fitness, like in, even in science and stuff and spirituality. And I like, like, I have a vast array of knowledge in different areas. And I think that's crucial because you expand your creativity and your, and your thinking. Um, and it not only will help you in business, but in life in general. So I definitely agree with you on that point. Like it's so important and so key. Yep. So, I can see that you like gaming from your chair and that makes me excited. <laughs> yeah. I love gaming. Anyway, uh, yeah. I know, like I'm a gaming <laughs> chair. It's funny because G'day Frank has the same one as this one. We, yeah. oh my even the same color or yeah yeah it's the titan it's from secret lab it's an aussie company um it's called the titan from secret lab it's also, it's so comfy man like i get all the way back like i need like, to get one it's like awesome i but, really um, do need to get one yeah yeah it's comfy like it's ergonomic and stuff but um <laughs> but yeah so cool that's awesome I, I love you sharing your story and like how the whole process and like what you went through with your family and stuff and i really think that helps you like when you overcome something it makes you stronger and it makes you very resilient and i like that because you have that um in your tagline resilient strate strategies <laughs> so that's a cool insight um and i can see why you have that you know what i mean uh, that's awesome so did you start so straight after that did you like start doing design or or in that process of starting to follow all these new people like sean west and stuff is that when you started learning about strategy um no uh, I had a glimpse of strategy. I just didn't know what it called, what it was called. I, like many of us, I was doing strategy without knowing I was doing something. Yeah. You know, like I was doing a version of it. Of course, I wasn't doing strategy because yeah, it wasn't the exact process. But Definitely. I was, I, I was having a foot, foot there. Yeah. So mm. I, I couldn't start right away working as a designer because of my visa here. But then our um. Mm what is it called? Our citizenship with Italy came out. Like we we had been applying, we had applied like 10 years prior. It came right in, like in the right time. It was, it was crazy. So my yes. mom, she knew of our Italian 
background and she applied 10 years ago from that time <laughs> wow and it took us 10 years to actually get an italian citizenship and i was like look the school is not going anywhere i have to work but it's if yeah. i open a company here it's not guaranteed that i'm gonna get a, uh, a visa so like it was mm. a period of maybe six months where I, where i was a bit unsure yeah and then it happened and immediately i started like a company a freelance company and yeah. uh, like a sole trader or like how does it work yeah out of it? yeah 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 Sweet. like a sole trader it's the equivalent equivalent yeah. and then i started learning about branding and i was doing initially just logo design and then i think it's a good step by step i was doing logo visual identity and then i i feel i felt like i needed something more like <laughs> this is not right like there's something missing here <laughs> yeah definitely and it's kind of weird because I think it's this mix that I have in my family with my parents of both sides of the brain, so to speak. Yep. You know, so like I, I couldn't put a finger on it. And then... Did, did they teach you stuff not, about anything about like strategy or did they just say, oh, shouldn't you learn strategy or... No, because I don't think Brazilians think that way that much. Okay. Nowadays, it's changing. I can see that it's changing, but I, mm -hmm. like, I had to. I felt like I had to add something else, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite sure how did, I did got you... into it. I think I, I was probably reading some business book, and then the light bulb mm. went, and I was like, okay, now it makes sense. So that was it. Was that before? Like you, obviously, you followed the future and Christo. Um, like did that was that did that come before you started following like the future it came before it came before and i remember while i was doing the freelancing that chris actually followed me and mm. i was like okay i'm doing something right here <laughs> and then we went on a zoom call and we chatted a little bit i think he wanted to do some some um mm -hmm. some program with the future but because okay. of my time zone it didn't work out okay and, that's fine um, so of course, like cool. I watch what everyone does. Yeah. But at that time, I didn't realize I actually wanted to focus on strategy and mm. actually even have a studio. Like I was just experimenting. Yeah. And I think that's important. Like you gotta experiment as much as you want until you land in the right path. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And it's a it's a process as well. Like even for me, like I just started doing strategy this year and like all the designs I did in the past, I could see like I wasn't doing it properly. I was only doing like a little bit here and there, but I could, it, like it to totally changed the way I do like design now. Um, but yeah, it's all about experimentation. See what works for you. You can apply principles and learn different things. But yeah, once you find the right thing, then it, like it works. Um, so when was, did you start implementing strategy straight away or did you do... Um, the core strategy kit from the future or like did you just do it test it with your friend like how did you like start implementing i used our businesses in brazil oh, okay a, smart good job you know as a uh as a hamster <laughs> hamster whatever you want to call it <laughs> T test monkey. and we're still doing it uh we're still doing it because that's the other thing like when working with parents and with family it, yeah it's, it's kind of tricky to tell them that hey i actually know what i'm talking about and if we do this so it at the same time it's a, it's a rewarding like experience experience too yeah oh, you gotta to, convince them that's the hard bit and yeah yeah definitely and i am totally like whatever works for you you know if you want to do in my case i had this you know if i didn't have the businesses with my mom i would have yeah. probably just reached out to people and be like hey I'm doing this. Yeah. I would like to test it with you. He's a contract. He's how much it would cost. Yeah. But because I'm learning and I want to Free. like, I want to test my abilities and I want to build on my own framework and I want mm. to understand mm -hmm. the systems. I'm doing it for free. Mm. However, this is how much it would cost. Yep. Yep. Normally, would you like to do it? I would like to document it. I would like to make a mm. case set out of it. And I need your testimony. Like those things are not negotiable. Mm. And uh, this is actually, I'm doing this with my consultation business right now because I want to test formats and I want to test mm -hmm. and is doing that... it straight with entrepreneurs and not just auto creatives, you know? Yeah, definitely. And that's because I know you have two websites. You've got True Studio, which is the design stuff. And then you've got Julia Braga, which is 
just consulting and strategy, right? Yep. Uh, another les- lesson from Sean, which is the business trifecta. Yes. You know, like you've got a service, a product, and then you have something more, mm-hmm. what people would call the... the clients, income, products, and teaching. Those are the yeah, things. clients, products, and teaching. And, uh, or like, I, I don't see it as teaching. I want, I want to sort of like put my frameworks and my way of thinking out there. Yeah. You can call it teaching, but what I don't would know. You call, what would you call it? Well, I'm just calling it framework right now. Framework. Cool. I, I'm putting my frameworks out there and mm. uh, I've been working on that. And this is, you know, my personal, my personal brand or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, names. <laughs> <laughs> is it's going to be focused on actually passing the knowledge along. Yes. So with the studio, again, I'm all up for experimentation. And mm. I was, I wrote a strategy book called Strat It Up and people mm. bought it and people loved it. And I was oh, like, awesome. okay, there's something here. Mm. So I'm also working like on a continuation for that, which is going to turn into a YouTube. Like there is a lot that I'm thinking. <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> and it's all like, it's all like, because I see the value it's, I think Chris even says that, like when you teach, you actually consolidate your knowledge. Yes, yes. It, and that's true. something I also, and I also want to like, not when I feel, when I do those frameworks, I'm also creating systems for myself that 100%. I can easily fall back. Definitely. So that's the whole, re- like the whole reason of doing it is actually to pass it along, but then there is the advantage of having a fallback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also because i want to have like this agency you know that i'm building an agency mm. everything's now remote but like i want yeah. them to have a fallback as well yeah yeah and definitely so it's so it serves like this whole spectrum that's right it serves a whole different whole different lot of purposes instead of just like a one product or whatever and back to the teaching thing like there's something called the cone of learning it's like a pyramid like this people who read something you only retain 10 to 20% of that knowledge, but things that you, you apply, you retain 90% of that information and knowledge. So it's all about the application. And even as you were saying in your, your story today, as I was watching it, I say it as well. I'm like, you have to apply. If you're not doing, that's why I make YouTube videos. I'm just like, I just do it. (laughs) I was going to ask if this on my rant, because I asked people if they had applied and somebody like a lot of people replied, oh no, I'm waiting for the video version. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you got to jump on video, man. It's where it's You at. guys. <laughs> people don't read yeah. anymore. But you guys <laughs> ask me to do the posts. I do the posts and then you freaking tell me <laughs> that you are not applying it. I'm going to box your ears and slap you. <laughs> you got to you know encourage yours. them. You got to encourage them and give them motivation. <laughs> oh, I'm not that nice. Um, but anyway, like, I, <laughs> I do want to jump on video, but I want to jump it with like a wider purpose. Like, you were doing it by chatting with people. I want to do it. So, and I've been talking, for example, with people here who have businesses. I know mm. a few, like, I know the hack, Hector is that, is that the word from the university? Hector? Hector. Yeah. Is it rep? I'm not sure. Like the the director at the university, and I'm oh, know, dire- been, oh okay yeah. And because of course he knows a lot of businesses around, and I want to take like those small businesses and work with on a strategy with them. Yep. Document it and then put it on YouTube. So like a bit like the future, the branding, building a brand series. A, a li- yeah, a bit little a bit. bit like that. It it came from there. Like uh, I was talking to Matthew and. Uh, I realized that like small businesses, they don't think they want to, they don't think long term. They don't, they just want money. They just think of they, the short term money and cash flow and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I feel like people here in Finland are starting to change their mindset. Like they're starting to, and I think it's because Finns are very humble and very shy. They're not shy. They're just really humble. So okay, they don't okay. brag about so yeah, yeah. marketing for them. It's kind of like bragging about the product. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing that it's changing a little bit. Okay. So I would like to go on that wave. Mm. Catch and the there's wave. this whole thing, like the local, um, the locals, the local in here, like the local markets need a, a surge as well. So I think yeah. there's going to be, like there, there are a lot of people interested in something like this because yeah, and like you know, it, it puts them out there without that much effort. In yeah, hundred percent. Like it's probably From their the, side. They're probably seeing like Gary V ads or something saying like, "Wake up, get your business in order" or whatever. But um, I don't but, even know. Like, 
I don't know. I don't know. Like for me, like I'm, I'm like, in, I would call myself like tech savvy or internet savvy, whatever you want to call it. But like, I'm always online consuming content, just following people like entrepreneurs and stuff. So, but like, to me, like, I always ask myself, why are business owners doing that? Like, especially in the older generation, I don't know if they have that sort of like capacity or mindset or they don't know how to use like online or maybe they're just too busy or they got a full-time job. I don't know. But I always question myself, like, why aren't people like aware of these things like happening and stuff or this content, you know? For example, my mom, she doesn't actually know what to look for. Mm. So, they so feel I'm stuck. the one who's fit. Yeah, so I'm the one who's feeding her the information and I'm the one who's finding her the coaches and the mentors and the people to go and yeah. cuz you know invite like I am helping but I'm still in another country. Yeah. There's just so much I can do by tomorrow. Yeah. True. Uh, and so I, I always find people and I'm like go there tomorrow talk to her about this 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 and this yeah. say that I sent her she's going to be aware. It's like <laughs> this very almost tyrannic <laughs> way of doing it but I have to do it. You have to I, I, and she's slowly trying to understand. Yeah. I think they don't quite understand how it works and why it matters. But it's kind of like what Gary V says again. Yeah. It's the it's the radio and yeah. it's the TV yeah. and it's you know. Yep. So it's just a matter of time, like. Yeah. You there move are those on. that go with, and then those there that are those behind. that stay behind. Hundred percent. Like, and the the funny thing is, you mentioned like you're giving helping your mom. It feels like as a designer that. I always feel like I'm a bit of a researcher because I'm always like researching like stuff. And especially if you're working with a client, do you feel like, it, cause with strategy, you got to research competitors, market analysis and like do all that type of stuff, positioning, you got to look at what's in the market. So I feel like we are a bit of a researcher. So that's like a good skill to have. Like, would you agree or? Definitely. Um, and there are, and I've, I talked to, I think I made a post about it, like the places that I go to find information on yeah. uh, markets. I think a lot of people don't actually know how to do it. Like I'm no, realizing no. that they don't understand. For example, yesterday I was giving a consultation to yeah. a, um, and she helps people from Jamaica start their own businesses, right? Cool, cool. And I was like, well, you can go find the information that you want about, like not what people say they do mm-hmm. because that there is a difference but yeah. what they actually do from like mm-hmm. places like maybe not so i wouldn't say the the places that you would initially think of but like reddit quora yeah reddit's good quora's good i have a quora account even even tiktok yeah. surprisingly enough my brother uses that surprisingly enough if you watch if you if you know how to that's another thing you need to know how to search for stuff because you can with research and like strategy mm-hmm. you can easily get what you, overloaded what you with find. data yep yep correct and get analysis paralysis that yep. where you're just seeing stuff and you just don't commit to any information yeah hundred percent. Like, and and people get, I feel like people get overwhelmed, especially if they're a young designer, there's so much info out there and they're like, Oh, I need help. Like I need, they need direction because there's just so many, like so much stuff bombarding them every day. Um, What I do is that I, when I start a strategy, the first thing that I ask, not after like doing the workshop, what I do is that, what is it that you want to achieve? And I want to, and I called it, I put it on the stories. I don't know if you saw that. I mentioned, I talked about it with someone yesterday. It's like the Toby method. Um, so let's say that they want to, like a problem with, they, they would like to raise or bring more people to the website. So yep, to bring more, more people to their website by doing something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like by creating by working on the ceo to work mm-hmm. on the ceo by create as, as ceo seo what the hell <laughs> uh to work on the seo by creating a targeted or like well-crafted content yep to create like it's the two by it's actually two, two by but i like to call it toby because it sounds like toby. A, a little puppy oh, okay 
Two by two oh. by yeah. So I, I call like it the to two to Toby Madison. Toby, it sounds Toby. like a puppy. Yeah, it sounds like a puppy. <laughs> I, and puppy. I, like dogs. <laughs> I like dogs. I like dogs. <laughs> so so I go like this, you know, and then suddenly you know what to search. Okay, I'm working with content, so I need to read a little bit more the uh, what people or find out what people are doing when it comes to the content and then yeah. suddenly you sort of like exclude everything else and you can focus in one thing yes but sometimes the strategy is going to have like three four things and to achieve because they all correlated so content yes. marketing at the same time with <clears throat> maybe email marketing and yeah. so you can start building those definitely that tree of not uh, like of goals and yeah. to do's and then transform that into actual tactics you know yeah and so, so the toby method should end at a tactic like at a at tactic something more to something to yeah some, something more tangible so you go as much as many times that you you do the two by two by as many times as you should but mm -hmm. it's just because i do feel overwhelmed as well and i need to have some kind of control otherwise i yeah. easily go like this yeah 100 percent so what's so you're talking about goals and stuff like what's one of let's just talk about a bit about your strategy process like how how does how is does it flow like do you start with a workshop and then go into um the goals and, and all that stuff or do you go into brand personas or competitor analysis like what's your process look like in a simple i don't want to lie i don't like going to a workshop not knowing anything so if it's a sub it, I'd like, I li prefer to work with established brands exactly because of this. Uh, I think it's just my style of doing things fits better in that mm. sense with yeah. these people. Um, so I like to have all the knowledge they have. And for example, I want to see the, the numbers, the, how sales are converting and, you know, CLV, uh, the custom lifetime value and um, mm. how, how many the data from analytics, like I like to see the numbers first and I like yeah. to understand what people are saying and can which I, is obvious. Can I ask how do you, how do you extract that out of the, the client? Like, is it, they already know that you're a strategist and they're coming to you specifically for that. Or it's like you said, Oh, I need to know this information. Can you please like, you know what I mean? Not everybody's going to be happy to give like CRM information. For example, the mm -hmm. lifetime value of a customer, but some of them will, without an issue, mm. divulge that. Like I respect, I respect okay. it. But if something I need, I'll, I'll be like, "Would you be comfortable if I, mm -hmm. like, I have to do some sort of NDA, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, definitely. Because I cannot industry secrets. Yeah. So like, they don't always." what's the word again here we go um brain farts uh like they give don't in, give in or they don't give in right away but with enough information like if i have the analytics i already have a good amount of info definitely but it's extracting that can sometimes be so it goes back some to people don't they don't mind like okay just get whatever you want yeah and, and you know I'm, they know i'm not gonna put anything out there yeah i think it's okay it goes back to trust and relationships so no, it goes back to trust, definitely. Yeah. And I think it's valuable. I, and I cringe because people do like those questionnaires before talking to a client. And I'm like, why are you that. giving away I used to do that too. Chance? No, I used to do that too, but then <laughs> I learned better. Yeah, correct. I took it off. You know, like, sure, I understand why you do, why you do a questionnaire because you want to save your time. But what mm. you don't understand is that you are giving away like this window of trust that you could yes. be building and actually having a proper conversation with a client and yeah. actually get that data because I will also like fill up a, a questionnaire that has 20 questions like yeah the fastest way possible because I don't want to sit there doing that yeah definitely and, and do you do you always have a zoom call up front or a phone call up front as an initial yeah. as an initial thing yeah definitely yeah uh with like local there are people who prefer to have the meeting face to face and whenever it's possible mm -hmm. I, and that's the tricky part of being in Finland which is you know I'm isolated but I'm always like look 
if you really want at some point in the middle we can we can meet in person but mm. i think we're just gonna move a little faster like you have to explain and you have to be understanding yes when when a client because it happens like i know it happens and i don't mm. think people actually talk about it like yeah true. for those who are working remotely like we are yeah definitely we are or you know like just be understanding realize that the client is actually just wanting to get to know you because <laughs> they want to build trust yes they don't know who you are <laughs> like right. they, they might have read stuff in the internet and they might have liked their work but they they know they don't know mm. what's behind that's right uh, and, and sure why would they hire you if they didn't trust you but mm. It happens, like it really mm. does happen. We cannot be naive and just be like, oh, but you have to have the right processes, mm. that's not gonna happen. Or mm -hmm. if you choose the right clients, then they're always gonna trust you. Mm. Yes and no. Like you gotta be understanding of people's natures and like how they react, like how, how we interact with each other. It's just- That's right. And you gotta adapt. I, I like how Matthew, it was either Chris or Matthew and Cena that they were talking about, like you gotta mirror, mirror people. And I'm sure they got that from a book. Like I've read books like um, Influence and How to Win Friends and, and Influence People and stuff like that. Uh, Robert Cialdini. Yeah, that, yeah, Influence, that one as well. It's a good book. Um, Persuasion and Influence. Yeah, he has two different books. Yeah, so uh -huh. like, they're really good. On how and to Never Split there. the Difference as well. Yeah, I've almost finished that. I've been Chris reading the, the audio book. It's so good. It's, it's pretty, so, it's so interesting. It's like his stories and stuff. And like even, yeah, like I've been writing notes. It's... It's really good. Uh, there is a channel called Wired, and they often have CIA. Uh, I cannot remember his name, but it's, yeah. he's an older guy, and he talks a lot about the body body language and how a lot of it is not really like. It's all. We about think it it means uh, something, but it means something else, and yeah, you know, yeah. it's oh, I think so I've seen valuable. That. Did you watch it on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. What, I think I know what you're talking about, and like she analyzes and tells you like everything. I think it was a, a lady, I think, but I don't know. It was cool. There is a lady who works with like disguises and there is a guy that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a it. negotiator. Yeah. Okay. There's two of them. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think that's valuable. Like even watching stuff like that, you learn there so many things. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, feel, feel the room first and understand what the client needs to feel comfortable. Like, Mm -hmm. you're not winning anything by fighting with them and i think a lot of designers <laughs> exactly. tend to find like ego, be too ego. precious be too precious ego is the enemy <laughs> that book good. is so good yeah it's a good book <laughs> book nerd uh, anyway like um there is no you're not winning anything by being defensive about your work and about your process and i learned mm -hmm. that the hard way as well yep that's good um making a client feel comfortable you know, like it's their money, it's their business. Obviously, they're gonna do definitely <laughs> Be question things. Hundred <laughs> percent. And 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 <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's awesome. So, so we've been, we've been talking a bit about like the the process and stuff. So the goals and all those things. Like, what do you see? Um, what's one thing? If a young designer could implement strategy today, what's one thing from your process that they could implement today that will like add more value to their client projects? Oh, that's a tough question because I have like 300 answers to that. <laughs> Just go through your top three answers and consolidate. Summarize. Uh, what would that be? Um, proper methods, methods of research first of all yeah and organization is the second okay and which is it's not really a method or mm -hmm. something that's more tangible yeah for organization and not leaving things mm -hmm. for tomorrow just because the deadline is not here yeah i think as we start out we we tend to overestimate yep. the time we have mm -hmm. No, um, actually, we underestimate at the time we have and we overestimate our capabilities, but you're going to find out that you actually don't know anything. Yeah. And you're going to have to learn. So I think organization would be the first thing. Yeah. I am. Um, do, do you I, have like a printed, uh, well, obviously, sorry, you're, you're remote, right? So 
do you have like a document? Notion. Like a PDF? But or you just Notion. everything in Notion. And everything and, in Notion. And then you just input like the data as you're like talking to the client in the um so, call or yeah. So Notion is a huge friend of ours, but if I'm doing a meeting face to face, I I print something out. Like we and have and PDFs you write it. and okay. Yeah, we just write it. But yeah, because I don't like if I'm meeting with someone face to face, I don't like to have a device in the middle. Okay. So yes, I could do with my iPad, which is a smaller device. Mm -hmm, also, mm -hmm. I don't want to create barriers with a client, any yeah. sort of barrier, like any physical barriers. It might be like some, I might be thinking too much about it, but mm. like for if I can print it out, I will print it out. Yeah, yeah. Like for obviously, but it's again, if you're on your computer, go. then sometimes they can't really tell what you're doing. Like, unless you're like, Tell them up front, like, oh, hey, like for me, I got two, I got two screens, so I can just on the left screen just type stuff in. Or what I've done um, in the past is like I just have uh, my document Illustrator, and I'm just importing the information. But I'm probably gonna start using Notion because it's probably easier to type it stuff in. The so, thing with, no with Notion is that we have the fallbacks. So we have, I have one workspace that it's called for my for my consultation business. I have a workspace. Yeah. Everything under the same account. Mm -hmm. One for the studio and one that's called templates. Mm -hmm. So those templates are everything that people can use. And mm -hmm. I think I even put one of the templates on, uh, on I, the Instagram. I've just got one workspace, but I think I, I have to split them up because the, I'm getting so many like, like I've, like I've got heaps of different workspaces. But like, is it, it's all under one like plan, like your thing? <clears throat> uh... In a sense, yeah, because I, I like to do, it's not step by step, but I, I like to have something to fall back to if I need. So I have, and like, have the questions, that that's, would be the second thing. Mm -hmm. Have questions to ask the client, yep. but don't get too stuck on those. Yeah. Which is kind of like what you told me even. Yeah. I have the questions, but let's go with the flow and sense yeah. the room mm. and try to listen more like mm -hmm. what they're saying between the lines Yeah, yeah. and ask why. Um, I know that why is a very like aggressive word to ask sometimes. People are taking it back, but when you ask mm. like why? Yeah. And I experienced that like talking to other people in groups and why not? I'm like, but why? Yeah. They're like, how come? How the? Don't you understand? Are you stupid or something? No, I'm just really trying to understand why. Like it's and just that, my nature mm, to keep asking why and yeah, yeah. try to understand it. That's right. So like, don't be afraid to ask things That's that right. are not mm -hmm. in your worksheet mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah, and I don't, and so like, as you're typing in the the questions and you have all the templates and all that stuff, um. Do you, at the end of your workshop or whatever with the client, do you like solidify it into like a document or a PDF and then send it to them? Or how do you like do that? So I will have to always gather some insights. I always feel like the insights yeah. I have are never enough. <laughs> <laughs> so like I go to the drawing board again and I try to find information to sort of close the gaps. I like to use that. Like today we're gonna close some gaps and okay, that's next good. time we talk, next time we talk, those gaps are going to be closed. Mm. Like we are working to close the gaps. And next time we talk, the, the gaps are going to be closed. Mm. And I do not do a presentation so much like I'd rather have a conversation with them. Mm. So, yes, that's, I will create a presentation and I have like a storyline. There are four types of storyline that I have. Yeah. I think four. I even have this. Sounds like a lot. Uh, where is it? Me and like my papers. Wait a second, I have it right here because I was working on a on a strategy. Yeah. Oh, cool. So I have like a, a step by step here that yep, I yep. refer back to. Yep. So you focus either on shifts on how like the marketplace is changing, or mm -hmm. you paint a picture of what it was and how the business can be. It depends a lot on kind of leadership and mm -hmm. what kind of team you have if the team is really analytical they're probably gonna want to see insights more so we're gonna have like three yeah. oh my god i cannot say this <laughs> three three truths jesus christ <laughs> and or then you 
if you have someone who's more passionate, you can have like opportunity, challenge, opportunity, challenge, and show the strategy that way. Mm. Because that's the other thing, like the way you present the strategy really makes them believe in, believe in it or not. And you kind of yeah. have to find out mm-hmm. what works for that specific person. So mm. I have four different types of, like you can establish common ground mm. of what they are doing and then articulate how that challenge can be overcome. Mm. Uh, you can recap what you're doing and then introduce a method- methodology to go over that. That's usually very like, mm. man- like when you're talking to a lot of managers, that's usually good with managers yeah, and analysts. And with a smaller business, what works more, it's like the brand journey, like something yep, that, yep. you know, you show an opportunity, like for my mom, for example, it was, mm-hmm. it was this kind of like, oh, here's an opportunity. Like, here's what other people are doing. Yeah. Here's what you're not doing. <laughs> here's how you could look like. Yeah. But here's a challenge. So here's how we overcome the challenge. So it's kind of like those moving pieces. And do, do you include like, so do you try and help them visualize that um, that solution in a, in like in, in a visual way at all, like with mock-ups or anything, or is it just purely like via conversation? No design. Yeah, there's no, no design. design. I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna probably yes, I can paint a picture visually, kind of mm-hmm. like a, a uh, almost like a vision board. Yeah, yeah. You know, but it's depending on the method and on what kind of people. Some people will prefer that visual to be just pie charts. Yeah. Some people's like, mm. and the way that you find that out is like <laughs> the way they present the data to you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have like all these plans and analysis from our business, and you're mm-hmm. gonna see a bunch of data, like a yeah pie charts and numbers and i'm like okay i know what kind of person you are and like yeah, what kind yeah. of like management you you have here what kind of language you're speaking mm. i know how to talk to you now mm. like how to present the data to you yeah cool but, um okay well what are some let's get an example like what are some questions you ask the client whether it's a manager or let's just say for a small business right because a lot of people probably working with it you know small local business or whatever what are some questions or examples of good questions to ask the client to get a certain insight out of them that would be useful for like the identity? If they're working on an identity, the, I like to ask, why now? Okay. What happens if you don't do anything? Mm. I think that reveals a lot and I usually go from there. Mm. Interesting. What happens if you don't do anything? Well, our sales are going to go down and mm. we're probably going to lose customers because they're always worried about the sales. And I'm like, okay, Definitely. but, and why do you think mm. this problem will solve a problem? Like this solution will solve a problem. Yeah. And then they're going to give me a reason and then it goes from there. I think that, mm. yes, we can ask, you know, about, what brands do you like and why do you like them? Mm. But I think that's way forward. Way forward, yeah. It's not the first thing you should ask. And we that's right. like we are taught. I was taught in school to put that question in my questionnaire. Yeah. <laughs> like like sh- I get inspiration from uh, logos you like. I used to do that as well. But I'm like, they're not the, like I can see there's some value in that because you're getting some ID. But that's if you're not doing strategy. Because if you're doing strategy, you're getting insights anyway that are going to guide the, and if you're doing skyscapes, it guides that process. So you wouldn't need that question, you know? At all. Yeah. Yeah. So I think why now and why with me? Yeah, it's a good one. Why, why do you think I'm, I, I bring value to your businesses? Like mm. what is it that I've done before and social also like a little hint for you to whether or not they mm. are actually choosing you because yeah. They know what you're doing because sometimes you're going to get like those random emails and those random people who are like, I need a logo. And I'm like, okay, why? Can you do a logo for free? No, it's not like I need a logo and I understand and I understand Mm. where that thought comes from because they want to fix something. Yeah. My, my mom's way of fixing her problems back 
like five years ago yeah, was to yep. change the the way that the displays were okay. arranged yeah. in the front of the shop. And I was okay. like, I pulled her once outside. What did you say? It was during it was during Christmas. Yeah. And the place was empty. It was just me, my brother, and my stepfather. He was doing something with a with yep. a sign, and I remember. And I pulled her on the side, and I told her. Why? And that and that's and that's gonna be another thing um, that you're gonna know that you were doing something right with the okay. strategy. I pulled her on the right uh, to the side and I asked her. I told her that changing mm. the displays it's not gonna change the fact mm -hmm. that like the displays is, it's not gonna fix the problem, which right. was you know the way that she wasn't building a brand and there was yep. like. All the issues that you could possibly think Big, of. Bigger the admin part, issues. Yeah. The admin part, it was outdated, but it was working. Mm. But she's even come around to changing that, to committing to update all the systems and keep everything mm, updated. Because mm. that's also a problem sometimes. Definitely, definitely. When people don't see that their systems. And then it comes like to this, whether or not you're comfortable with mm -hmm. that skill set, like, do you understand how systems work? Yeah. Do you want to tap into that? Do you don't want to tap into that? Do you have the knowledge? Yeah. And she turned to me and she said, "How can you? How do you dare say that?" I'm like, uh -huh. "It's calm." She got offended, challenged, and offended. When people feel, and I, I think it was Mark Pollard's group on Facebook, Sweathead, Sweatheads, when somebody was discussing this when do you know your strategy is working because all i get is like surprised faces and <laughs> some people even cry and i'm like well then you do it right because you're hitting home you found the problem mm. it's usually something they don't want to admit it's happening so do you think it's connected with an emotional issue or it's just the person like lack of knowledge actually with small businesses they're emotionally and growing attached. and growing yep in growing businesses and mm -hmm. even like creatives themselves, they are emotionally attached. It's true. Their, yep. <laughs> they'll yep. work. Until you and, shift uh, from like subjective to objective and then you understand like it's don't get hurt by design. Like the, no, it's yeah. not about us. It's not about the owner. It's about the people they are serving. Right. And if they're right. doing something that's wrong, then you're pissing people off and you know, mm. you want to see it yeah. happening. Watch Gordon Ramsay. Oh, before he's funny, become man. A strategy, he's straight up and direct. Just Before boom. I started strategy, I used to hate him, but now I understand him. Oh. Like, I had this flip of vision. I was like, oh, my God, he's actually a freaking genius. Like, he, he goes, it's the emotion. It's always the emotional. Mm -hmm. I like how he's direct and, and assertive. The, like, obviously, he swears a lot, which, like, I personally don't like. But people, like, if, if, like, the whole thing, like, if you want to run a business, like, you got to take it seriously. Like, do you care about it? And if you really care about it, you're going to give the best service, the best customer service, the best, like it's going to be There's clean. No excuses. You're going to be yeah. excellent. You're going to have good quality stuff. Like if you don't care about what you're doing and the people like you're trying to attract then why bother doing a business? Like just go work for someone. Like, and I can see why he gets passionate because he's been doing it his whole life and, and stuff. And like, you just got to be straight up with people. People just fluff about and wonder why, like it's the mindset more businesses fail within the first three years like you know what i mean it's the mindset about, it's all about exactly. the head uh it's also like the people you have around you and the people that you talk to like my mom for example when i moved here she mm. she had like there is a lot of political things happening in brazil and a lot of businesses yeah, yeah, are yeah, closing yeah. Mm -hmm. and our building where our shop uh, is now was sold and a lot of her friends were freaking out i'm like you do not listen to them because these people are not in their right minds right now they are freaking out definitely definitely. you stay cool and back off don't yeah. even go to a dinner with these people because they are gonna Toxic. take you off your yeah. own mm. they're not gonna let you think straight they'll sow they'll sow negative seeds into her mind and then she'll start doubting and things like that that's what from happens. the shops from the shops that are not franchises because then they are going controlled by someone else mm. like not by someone else oh. but you know what i mean like there's yep. a different yep. process there is a process behind there is a system behind it mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he's the only one that stayed in wow cool so and from the shops in our area everything else closed wow 
So I'm like, you were doing something right, but now you just need that little nudge towards that right direction, which we are going now, like yeah. slowly and respecting her spa- her place because I understand mm. that the mindset, something that works yes. internally and you can just not show strategy and things down people's mouths. Like it just doesn't yeah, work. That's right. Unless they, they but really... the moment that they realize and it that's comes down, like it's why why 50 percent of those restaurants that got on ramsey yeah they all close 60 they all closed because you cannot change a person's mindset right away that's so. right and some of them they don't listen like you're talking to an expert he's been doing his whole life why aren't you going to humble yourself and listen because you're prideful there's people you know what i mean you gotta you gotta one thing i've learned in life is you gotta be teachable and you gotta understand that someone is gonna know more than you and have more experience. So always be open heart and open minded to learn from someone else. So you can grow I always, and learn. That's I always I see myself in the middle. Yeah. There is always someone who I'm learning from, but there is also yeah, someone yeah. who can't learn from me. I'm I'm in the, the middle. Layers. There's three layers: the people mentors above you, then the people you're doing life with, and then the ones you're teaching. Like I feel like bullying Michael Janda and Chris do uh, into yeah. being my mentors. Yep. Yeah. Like I will bully them until they say yes. Like I don't care. Like they're gonna be like they are my mentors to a certain extent, but maybe more like a coach, business yeah. coach type of yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna bully them. They're gonna have to say yes. I don't care. Just hack them. <laughs> don't worry. I believe you can do it. <laughs> and you know what? And persistence that made me. Like I, I've been in touch with agencies here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in Finland, and yeah. they are not approachable at all. Like what? Like what? By by email or is it for doing like work or like what? Either way, like the mindset is different when we're talking about agencies. I think they are more close to their secrets, so to speak. They are, Except or for the because future. <laughs> competition and such. True. True. And and even like Michael Jenner, like I know he has mm-hmm. uh, an agency as well. Yes, correct. And so there is the mindset is changing as well for us mm, mm-hmm. you No, know, in the big leagues or whatever and yeah ah uh, yeah well <laughs> people and people i i one of the things that i when i get my agency to a level of any of those guys yep that's one thing i'm keeping in mind is that like i'm not i'm gonna be approachable like i don't want to be closed down mindset yeah you know focused on whatever i'm doing but Mm. whatever i'm leaving as well you know like the other people i'm helping and like Mm. it's this whole like it's not i don't see it being about me you know Mm. and it only fuels me the fact that i cannot be in touch with Mm. like those i'm not gonna name the agencies but yeah that's all right just because they know I am an agency owner, they don't want to talk to me directly. They're like, they want to, Yeah. there is some kind of rivalry. And I'm like, it doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Yeah. This doesn't exist. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's all an illusion. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when you say your agency, is that true studio? Cause, and you, you have yeah. a few people that work for you, like developers or? Yeah. So like I have a business dev. She's a really good friend of mine. We met back then in the forum. The ages forum or farm and she, a she forum just, oh i thought you said forum. Farm. i thought you said farm for a second no like, no <laughs> the whole back when like the whole music thing before i moved to yeah, Finland, yeah. and she moved to germany and i was oh, like wow. okay look it would be really cool to have an office in germany someday i'm not yeah. planning to have an office for like three five years maybe yeah because we can do it without an office so right. why not have right. a lower overhead why not what's the point exactly uh, and then my cousin is a freaking genius and he was like, mm. I want to be part of this. I want to help. Yeah. So awesome. The dev without a photo is, uh, my cousin and he's a freaking programming genius. And I, I oh, saw that's the, the guy, that. Victor. Yeah. <laughs> wow, and awesome. Mila is like, we are all in the process of learning a lot getting a lot of information because it's a whole new world for all of us like, yeah i was working alone before and now suddenly i want to build a team yeah yeah i think that's awesome man and like because, and mila is mm. doing a lot of learning with sales and like she's dedicated and she's, she's yeah. 
Yeah. Her head is like this, you know, all the time. <laughs> oh, no. Learning. That's awesome. I love it. it. Always be learning. Like, why not? Especially like if you're if she's doing sales and stuff. Like, you got to be on the ball with the strategies and the marketing and like what like what are we doing? Like, what market we're hitting and yeah. Yesterday, Phil Knight, uh, on a video I was watching, the founder, one of the founders of Nike, Nike. there is a book, yeah, there is, I don't know how to pronounce <laughs> Everybody <laughs> pronounces their own way. Doesn't anyway. matter, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and he was talking about that a team, a great company is not built without great people. Correct, yep. And that he wouldn't have done it alone. And I'm like, exactly. Mm, exactly. Like, Thank you for saying that aloud because I needed to hear that aloud. Yeah. Because sometimes I feel like I need to take responsibility to solving everything and dealing with everything. But yeah, there's a quote by um, Richard Branson as well. Um, like a similar thing. It's like, like your business is built by the, like if you treat your people well, they'll treat your business well. Like because they'll enjoy they'll enjoy being there because you're, you know, you're giving them the best, you know what I mean? But if you're like, they won't, you know what I mean? Yeah. You yep. There is an introduction to some book that I cannot remember right now where someone visited the Pixar studios or maybe the Disney studios and they felt like this creativity aura in the place. And I was like, mm. that's exactly the feeling I want mm, in my mm. studios and in my industry. Since whenever yes, we yes. have an office, yeah. And somebody comes to visit. Yeah, that's, that's the want. aura I want there. I don't um, want that corporate. Yeah, nah, it's strictness. It's too strict and boring, and like, and sometimes you can't. Like for me, I would uh, like because uh, I'm, I'm I've been working part time at a company, and they like dress really nice and like corporate. A lot of them wear like suits, like button ups, and then sometimes I come with different stuff because I'm the creative and I can get away with it. But other people they can't get away with it. I'm like, why not? It's like unless you're going to a meet client meeting, like what's the, why well, can't it be a bit more, you know, Kaz, you know, with some energy and life and vibrancy, you know, but that's just my, that's just my thinking. I think it's slowly changing though. Yeah. hundred percent. If we look at tech companies like Google and like Canva and like all these big ones, you know, well, that's awesome. All right, cool. Well, we'll go back to strategy for a couple more questions and then we'll start to round off. Um, what's one thing that a young, uh, uh, or actually, what's what are what's the biggest mistakes that you see young designers um, that are trying to learn strategy or doing strategy uh, making? Oh, um, a lot of people feel like they have they need to have their own framework. Okay. Or create their own framework. They get mm. so heads down in trying to create their own framework. And I think it comes from the being overwhelmed by so many different frameworks. Yeah. And in the end, you're just going to find yourself jumping around anyway yeah. into frameworks mm. and having, like, you can build a system with time, but you're not going to get, you're not going to build a proper framework without actually knowing how they work. That's right. So I think it should just, I think they should just get into it, get one framework, mm -hmm. apply it, see if it works, see how it works, see how it feels, get the yeah. next one and apply, apply it Yeah. and experiment. Like, don't be afraid to experiment. Mm. That's and the key thing. It's like, try, try. Would you recommend testing and test, making them test it on friends and family and stuff? Or like, what would you suggest to help them practice or experiment? Do it for free for other real companies okay. or do it at a discounted rate if you feel like you you have half um, like the competence to do it. Mm. Charge half of what you would normally like. Do 5K, mm. then the next one 10K, then the next one is going to be 20K. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I think that's great. So do you think every designer should be doing strategy? Or should some just stay in their niche and do it? Like, what's your perspective on that? There is a zone of genius. There are things that you don't enjoy doing and that you never enjoy doing and that you shouldn't do regardless <laughs> of what people say. Mm. It's self-awareness. You got to okay. know mm. who you are and what you want and what you're good at, what you have interest. Maybe in like with me, like 
after what seven, seven years of working with design, I realized that, hey, strategy is cool. <laughs> don't be like, don't be stuck with, just because there's a lot of talk with strategy and branding that you should do the same. Yep. Don't disregard it. Mm. Don't, don't not do research, if that makes sense. Do the research mm. because you have to. Yes. Otherwise, you are playing the blind and then your work is not valuable anymore. Mm, that's, pretty, that's good. That's really good. I like that. It's always a bit, yeah, like I remember when I just used to show the designs and then like a lot of young designers, they just have the magical reveal and they just like, they go, like they talk to the client and they just go off to the design and then just show them and there's no like strategy or like anything at all. And then the client's like, oh, I don't like it. And then it's all like subjective and then have to redo it. So I feel like, yeah, definitely it's like, like a process. Yeah. hundred percent. And all an process. understanding of the other person is going through. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think that's really key. Like you brought up some really good points there and like how, and now, so you've been doing strategy for what, like a couple of years now or what? How yeah. Long? Um, three, three and a half, three and a half. Wow. Well, um, so yeah around four put put around four yeah well so you're definitely ahead of me in that um like how has it transformed your design business uh i started saying no a lot mm. which <laughs> helped me focus more okay and Wait, understand two things first focus on an actual niche and mm -hmm. the people that i want to work with yep and actually focus on my goals because mm -hmm. I realized because once you open your eyes to strategy because we have now we are talking about brand strategy but strategy is just a way of thinking and like definitely thinking deeper doing something mm. uh, so once I learned about strategy I'm like I can do this to like my finances I can do this to my goals I can do this with yeah. at a certain level with my like relationships Mm. you start realizing the purpose behind of what you do yeah because that's what strategy sort of forces you to think mm. about like what's the purpose of this mm. so the way that it's changed that suddenly i realized that you know being a freelancer working by myself wasn't what i wanted mm. in the end like i would be more comfortable if i had it not comfortable but it would be Preferable. doing the right thing yeah by having a team and actually helping more people like that yeah mm. cool mm. that's awesome deep, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> deep. <laughs> that's awesome so so going forward in the future are you completely just going to be doing um strategy or are you still going to be doing design and obviously you want to have an agency uh, and stuff, but like at the like in short term, like are you doing design at all now or just strategy? I am focusing actually on my personal brand right now because since I'm working with, like it's me and, and Mila, which is my dad, and she's going through some health things. And I'm like, okay, maybe okay. it's better if you work that out and then we build a studio together. Yep. But both of us focused on the same goal. Yep. So right now I'm doing, I'm working on, you know, with clients one-on-one mostly. Mm. I will start introducing workshops now. Mm -hmm. And I want to work with, you know, I want to do the whole uh, Mind the Gap show on YouTube with the businesses. And yep. I'm like talking to local people. Mm. And, That's a good idea. And I'm taking this time where I'm just working with just strategy to actually learn more about the agency world and how it's built and management mm. and things that I would mm. like, I would have to have yes. just to make it run properly and build the systems as well. Like I'm taking that opportunity to do that. Yep. And at the same time, you know, working with the pro with the business in Brazil to set it to a point where I can comfortably work from here, not freaking out what's going to happen tomorrow yeah. if I'm, you know, if I don't send someone there. And yeah. So I'm like building three fronts already. Yeah. And, wow. um, 
so it's it's mostly strategy work, but our studio is going to focus on it's focusing on packaging and three D work. Mm. Uh, it's a and you know, like I'm on a mastermind with Steph from Let's Talk Branding. Oh yeah, I know Steph. Cool. So at the same time, I'm learning a lot with him, and mm. uh, I'm taking it slowly on the mi- the macro. But at the same time, I'm doing a lot on the micro and stuff. Yeah, yeah, so like I'm doing yeah. a lot. You are, I can tell. Like the, co- the amount of content you're posting on Instagram, I'm like, man, it's a lot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and like, and I'm- they are like, because I'm working on this framework, yeah. the framework, and um, like it's a creative business success framework. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting everything I know condensed. So I'm t- extracting stuff from there. Yes and putting on on uh, Instagram. It's a way to keep posting as well with something that I um, I actually believe in and that I mm. live or yes. have lived. Yeah, experienced. That's awesome. And like, so do you have any retainer clients? Like, or is it, are you just, like, how is that working? Uh, you focusing because on most of end? them, most of them, the thing is the clients that I used to work are not the clients that I want to keep working with. Mm. Yeah. So I'm trying to cut those slowly. Cut the ties. Yeah. Not cut. Yeah, not know, cut I know the ties. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Put them with people who are actually yes. going to be able to give them the attention. Because, for example, mm. I was working with bodybuilders, with musicians, yeah, with uh, smaller, like, so- solopreneurs of yeah. any kind. Yes. Like videographers, photographers. Yeah. So it has nothing to do with packaging and with what I want to focus. Yep. But at the same time, I can build like the business, my personal business, the way that it's yeah. going to help other people. So that's what I'm doing right now, basically. Awesome. Uh, I think it's great. Like, I think it's great what you're doing and like you're learning and definitely uh, the, doing those frameworks and even like maybe doing doing products and stuff like that will really help out designers and stuff. Um, like, yeah, we'll I start. hope <laughs> it will, will. Like I'm even learning from it as well, um, which is cool. <laughs> it's right. You can use. Uh, I can give you feedback. You just I can, I can be your guinea pig here and there if you need it. <laughs> Kidding, I kid. never thought I would hear that from someone. <laughs> I was just joking, but anyway. Um, I know. <laughs> so, um, if you could recommend one resource or or a book or a course for a young designer to jump in or okay, maybe not one or a few, like if they were starting to learn strategy right now, what would uh, the best place to go or, or get or be? I think it should start with the creative business, uh, creative strategy and the business of design by my good friend Douglas. I love Douglas. Like yeah. he's an amazing guy. Mm. Um, well, of course, I'm going to plug in Shred It Up. Coming soon. Just keep, <laughs> keep an eye on. Obviously, on your stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm, putting from, I'm putting the shop from the studio because I decided to separate it okay, okay. to my website. So it's going to be out soon in the website. Just keep an eye out on Instagram. Hmm. And uh, oh, what more strategy? Sorry, if you don't have it, if you can't remember now. Mark Pollard, it's the guy to watch. LinkedIn, Instagram, be on his group on Sweatheads. And of course, let's talk branding because Steph has a huge focus on strategy. Mm. He doesn't do branding like most people do branding. He, just he actually on knows. He, yeah. he knows his stuff. Yeah. And of course, the future. I mean, <laughs> if you don't know the future... What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> is um, is it Mark Pollard uh, the Mighty Jungle dot co? Is that what it is? Uh, it's and Mark sweat, Pollard. Sweat, sweathead. Yeah, yeah. Sweathead. Alright, right, cool. I found him. Alright, cool. Awesome. Alright, cool. Well, I got one more question. If <laughs> if you could Just give. Do it. If you could give one piece of advice to your 18 year old self, what would it be? Fight for what you want. 
don't do what others want you to do. Experiment because you're still living with your mom. <laughs> Instead of trying to understand how the stupid teacher in the university is thinking, mm. do some work by yourself and learn more outside of the school. Mm. Um, yeah. Awesome. Don't do do what's in your heart. Mm. Follow the heart. That's it. That's all it's all about. Love it. Love it. Well, thanks, Julia, so much. Where can Thank they... you. It was fun. No worries, <laughs> man. We can do it again uh, soon when you're running that uh, big agency. <laughs> um, big plans. <laughs> <laughs> secret. <laughs> no, <Yeah>, awesome. No. <laughs> Wait, so Not going to can... be a secret. Don't worry. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, but yeah, so where, where can people find you? Um, obviously, your Instagram and stuff. But yeah, like where can people find you and your links and stuff? So my Instagram is at the Julia Braga, not imitating Chris Do, not at all. <laughs> um, and True Studio uh, as well on Instagram. So T R U U, like True, but instead of me at the end, it's another U. And uh, my website is juliabraga.me and this truestudio.com for the studio. And I am responsive. If you want to chat with me, you can send an audio, you can send a story. Like I love talking to everyone. It's like it's what it's all about. Like I, mm. I want to hear what you're gonna say. You can ask me questions. Um, yeah, um, I'm there. Beautiful, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Julia. You've been great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your secrets and tips on strategy. Um, but yeah, excited for the future. And yeah, thanks so much. Have an awesome day. Bye. Thank you. You too.